Welcome back to, ta-da, 3D printing. Okay, we are on to chapter five. This is the selector assembly. It says that it is moderate on the difficulty and it has 12 steps. So we will need some more tools. And we are done with this for now. We can get that out of our way. We need to find the selector. So we're still on the Idler Selector MMU. All right, so the selector's in here. We're looking for this. And a magnet and a magnet ball. So those were in, in this bag we have a magnet. Does that say the right thing? Yeah, the 10 by six by two magnet. And the magnet ball. Okay, so that must be in, yeah, it's in here. I want that to go flying somewhere. Okay. Step three, insert the magnet into the marked opening on the selector. Push it in until it is flush with the surrounding surface. Okay, it's got it. Hmm. Okay, so it's got this little split right here and it's kind of showing it this way. Looks like we're putting it here. Yeah, definitely magnetic to each other. Put the ball there. Okay, so we're gonna put the magnet here. Mm-hmm. Looks good. Insert the magnetic ball in the hole on the top of the selector. So here. And yeah, it says it should be attracted, and sure enough, you can see that it went all the way as tight as it could be. You can observe, observe the ball's position from the side. Yeah, that looks good. Step four, selector assembly trapeze nuts parts preparation. We need the trapeze nut. Just gotta read the directions, right? Okay. All right, this is the trapeze nut we're looking for. No idea why it's where it is, but here we are. I don't think we need the motor yet. M3N nut. Just one. Yeah, that's the more hexagon shaped one. And the M3NS, the square one. Oops, we just need one of each. And then M3 by 10 screws two. Step five, insert the M3N nut in the marked opening in the selector. Okay, so it's shaped like this. We're showing it like this. The easiest way. I guess I need to make sure I read the next thing. Push it all the way in, make sure the magnet doesn't get pushed out. The easiest way of inserting the M3N nut is by an M3 by 30 screw used as a handle. So, got an M330. And we're going with the M3N, which is the hexagony one. Put that on. And we're gonna try to put it all the way down in there. Yeah, that looks good. I do feel like my magnet shifted a hair. Yeah, you can see the 
magnet kind of moved just a little bit off centered, but it looks fine from the other side. Hmm. Huh. Okay, I guess we'll see if that's okay. Insert the M3 NS nut into the marked opening on the other side of the selector. Okay, so where it shows the little label, right? Yeah, where it shows the little label. Okay, man, my label is barely showing. Hmm, yeah. E, okay, maybe I was just looking at it upside down. Okay, so on this side, it's got this kind of chevron pattern here. We're going to put the M3N, the square nut, here. Boy, I think I can do this without... Okay, I think that's as good as it's gonna get. Now we are going to fix the trapeze nut. Looks like it's got the logo this way and the little chevron this way. So we're gonna put the nut here and put screws through there. It says to just tighten enough for now. Don't have to be fully tightened down. Step six, we need some more parts. We need more M3NS square nuts too. Okay. And then a bushing, oh, two bushing tubes. Okay, so this says that I have two bushing tubes. They're the longest ones. So it should be in this bag. I feel like they have a gold hint on the picture, so that's what we're looking for. And they're definitely the longest cylinder. Two more M3 by 10 screws. And the selector front plate. That is in this idler selector MMU. The front plate, there's two pieces left. Looks like we're looking for the one with the little gold bit on it. Insert the bronze bushing tubes into the marked openings on the selector as far as you can using your hand. Make sure you're inserting them from the correct side. Press the tubes in by carefully pushing the assembly against a flat surface. In the end, the tube should end up flush with the surface on the other side. Okay, so it looks like we are looking at it from this position kind of like this. Mm -hmm. I feel like if I push into my Ikea top, I am going to scar it even more. Let's see if this will, nope, that's not gonna work. Nope, I'll just make holes in that. Okay. Yeah, let's just destroy the top some more. What's the matter? Okay. We're good. Step eight, insert the two M3NS nuts in the marked openings on the side of the selector. Push the nuts all the way in using the Allen key. Add the front, okay. So it looks like it's on this side with this piece, the trapezoid nut. I'll put them up here. Oh, those ones actually slipped in. Probably means they need to go even farther in. Hmm. 
yeah okay those look good kind of slipped in just a little more add the front plate on the selector make sure the side of it is flush with the flat part of the selector so the nuts facing this way goes up here uh -huh. Mm. and make sure the side of it is flush with the flat part okay so not only do you need to make sure that the textured side is facing down there is a flat and an angled and the flat needs to go this way angled goes away from you I think that's correct. Okay, now we want the super finda, which for me is the last thing in this bag, the big bag. Yep, and then M3 by 10 screw and an M3NS, the square nut. Step 10, selector assembly. Insert the M3NS nut into the marked opening on the front of the selector. So we have it facing this way. We're gonna put it in here. And that one does not wanna go in easily. Okay, that looks good. Insert the Super Fienda Insert the super fanda sensor in the corresponding opening in the selector. It's showing it like this. Mm hmm. And then it goes in there. Adjust the position of the sensor so that it ends flush with the top inner surface of the D-shaped opening on the side of the selector. Okay, so, okay, so it just needs to be flush. We'll put a screw in here to hold it in place. Okay, so I'm going to set the screw in place. I feel like I'm still a little too far, but I wanted to... Let me just do that to make sure it's flush. Hmm. Okay. As flush as I think it's going to be. Tighten the screw up. Okay, so it seems like it's, yeah, I'm pulling those two together. Those two pieces there. Mm -hmm. Kind of pulled over away a little bit right there. Maybe it just had a gap and I didn't notice it before. Yeah, okay. Step 11, selector assembly cutter parts preparation. We need another M3NS nut. One M3 by 10 screw. The blade holder is the last piece in here. Looks like this. Okay. The blades. Mm-hmm. 
Be very careful while handling the blades. You might easily harm yourself. Ooh, let's see how I do. Step 12, insert the M3NS nut in the marked opening on the top of the selector. Push it all the way in. Okay, so it's got it like this. Okay, so I'm looking for this one. Insert the two blades in the recess. Oh, that's why we had that pretty little chevron pattern. This one right here. That's where blades need to go. Make sure the blades are seated nicely and do not overlap each other. The blades should be as close together as possible. Let's set this down so I don't hurt myself. All right, let's see if I can manage this without. I think. Mm hmm. I think we got to do this. Oh, I kept trying to get it to be all the way in, but it's going to overlap a little bit. I think that's a lot of what was throwing me off. Okay, I think they're where they need to be, but they need to be closer. Not so close as I think they can be. They don't seem like they want to get any closer to each other. Mm -mm. But they're definitely in that little notched area. The first time that I put this together, I had version A, which is the one on the left where the blades sit very close together. And then the second time that I built this, I got version B, which is the one on the right. And there is a little plastic piece in the middle that kind of holds the blades in place a little bit more. It's a little bit confusing because it seems like that shouldn't be there, but the picture does show there's multiple versions. And I did um, put it together this way and it works just fine. Now we're going to cover the blades with the blade holder. Verify the blades are still seated perfectly in place while attaching. Fix the blade holder in place with the M3 by 10 screw. Okay, which direction does this go? Mm hmm, looks like this. Because there's a little notch right there. It looks like it's got a little bit of a notch over the back piece there. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's it on this chapter. This little guy is done. The next chapter is chapter six, the pulley body assembly. Thanks for watching.